Hello and welcome to PFP Rafe's Reviews. I'm of course Rafe Garland and um, we'll get straight into it. There's only one place to start this week and that is in the London Olympic Stadium. West Ham United hosted Tottenham Hotspur in the return of Jose Mourinho. Now obviously all the cameras and all of the action was focused on Mourinho but there was a football match played as well. Um, not a great football match mind you, some excitement towards the end. But it was incredibly one-sided. Um, West Ham are in a lot of trouble. I know Joe did a piece yesterday or, or the day before on managers that are in trouble. And he, he talked a bit about uh, Pellegrini. But I mean, things are going from bad to worse very, very quickly at West Ham. And I think that any manager of any team probably would have gone and got a win in, in, uh, in West Ham last week. So we won't be singing Jose praises too loudly just yet obviously they won midweek as well and we'll talk about that in a second um i think that a few of the things that we can take away from saturday's game eric dyer is going to play a lot for spurs under Mourinho, at least until he can sign a replacement that does a similar job but i mean he wanted to sign dyer while he was at manchester united so i have absolutely no doubt that he'll find his way into the starting 11 week in week out for spurs he was hooked early on in the champions league game and I think that was a purely tactical decision. I don't think Mourinho expected to be two goals down um, inside half an hour. Dyer's coming back from injury and a long, a long term injury and, and from illness as well. And he was the obvious man to, to come off. I think something though that that substitution has done, it, it, it's shown how strong Mourinho's management is going to be that if there's a change he's got to make for the good of the team, he's going to do it. He's not worried about hurting players feelings and I think at, at, at any level you coach teams and you ask them what their goals are and what their targets are and what their ambitions are and they'll all tell you that they just want to win football matches that it's not about them it's about the team as long as the team is winning that they're happy it mightn't be true but that's what they'll all tell you so I mean what, what Mourinho did was sacrifice one player for the good of the team and it it's paid off and at least paid off midweek as long as he doesn't have too much to, to clean up with Dyer and I don't think that he will um, because, like I said, I think the Dyer is going to feature a whole lot for him. The other thing that I think he's done in the last couple of games is he's moved Mora back into his natural forward position, as a right-sided forward or a right winger, rather than as a centre forward or, or as a, a, a traditional right midfielder or even sometimes an inside forward. He's just not any of those things. He's a, he's a right winger. He's incredibly explosive. He can produce magic moments of brilliance. He doesn't need to be involved in, in passing and in the build-up, and he doesn't need to be the one necessarily on the end of the chances going into the box. Um, Harry Kane's in terrific form. People have, people have said he's not the same Harry Kane. He's gotten worse over the last couple of years. I don't buy that for even a second. His goal-scoring record for club and country this season is absolutely phenomenal. It's as good as any other season. He's just not had the same level of service that he's had in years gone by at Spurs. And I think that that is all about to change. I mean, Spurs could have had four or five early on against West Ham. They were so poor. And look, they did let them back into the game. And obviously, they conceded a couple of goals against um, Olympiacos midweek as well. So there's a lot to work on defensively for Mourinho. But that that part of his management comes as second nature at this stage. We all know Jose Mourinho teams um, are renowned for their defensive strengths and capabilities. So I don't think it's... It's, I think that it is only a matter of time before that defence is sorted out and we really see a, quite a dangerous defensively balanced um, Tottenham Hotspur. So I'd look out for that. Um, Bournemouth lost at home to Wolves 2-1 and things aren't going brilliantly for Bournemouth at the minute. I mean, they're still mid-table, but so is every other team in the Premier League. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I think that this is probably the best Premier League in terms of competitiveness. I know Liverpool seem to be running away with the top, but anyone that's not a Liverpool fan is, is, is waiting patiently for them to, to slip up a couple of times and throw it all away. Um, I mean, right away for the battle for second, third, fourth, it, it's, it's locked in there. And I don't think City are nailed on second place anymore. I mean, there's only six points that separate uh, fifth place from 17th. And then, I mean, there's only three points, sorry, even two points separating the bottom three who are only three points off safety. So, I mean, it's it's all to play for for pretty much everybody. I know we're still very, very early on in the season, but at this stage, I mean, Watford have won, what, one game and you still wouldn't back them to go down because so many of the mid-table teams 
are so poor and so average as well, but also seem capable of causing upsets, um, <laughs> which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so Wolves win again. <clears throat> they play again. T- tonight's Thursday. They play again tonight in the Europa League. They haven't played just yet, but that's another good win for them. You know, obviously being linked with the Arsenal job this week as well is, is, is testament to how well Wolves are doing battling on two fronts this year, looking to obviously retain that fifth place and to actually go places in the Europa League. Um, there is a possibility we could see Wolves playing Champions League football next season, which is absolutely nuts, considering that they were only promoted to the Premier League the year before last. Um, Arsenal drew 2-2 with Southampton in a game that has led to Arsenal fans going either not going to the Emirates tonight or going to cheer for Frankfurt to protest Emery and the fact that Xhaka gets a start tonight I'm sure will make all sorts of headlines tomorrow. Look, the game itself, Arsenal were actually quite lucky not to not to concede more. They weren't great. Lacazette scored in stoppage time to, to, as an equaliser and was too embarrassed to celebrate. I know Joe spoke a lot about Arsenal midweek so I'm not gonna get caught up talking about them for too long but I mean something has got to give there at Arsenal I, I'm not necessarily of the opinion that this is all Emery's fault but I think with the situation they've got themselves into with the fans totally offside totally not on board things are gonna get things are gonna go from bad to worse very very quickly if he stays in charge for much longer uh, Leicester racked up another 2-0 win this time away to Brighton uh, Brighton, as good as they've been, just couldn't live with second place Leicester, and they deserve to be second place legitimately. They they look if if Leicester were top of the league right now, they would probably deserve it on the performances that they've been putting in. I know Liverpool have been winning games, and nothing in the Liverpool method is 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 by accident. They're winning games late on because they play a certain breed of football, brand of football. We're actually going to talk about them next, and um, we'll stick with them. They they won against Crystal Palace. 2-1 another late goal some more VAR controversy but I mean with the, with the with the Palace goal that was disallowed it, it was a push in his back with two hands he shouldn't do it in years gone by it might not have been picked up but it was picked up and you cannot argue that it is a foul so look as much as VAR might not be consistent with giving those type of decisions when they are given I don't think that as, a, as an attacking player you can feel aggrieved when you put your hands on someone like that I mean it's a bad mistake but anyway Liverpool play abrasive football I think that they've got players that are more hard working and fitter than most other players in the Premier League and they they grind teams down they dominate possession they make teams work from side to side to side to side defend balls into the box clear keep them under high pressure for the whole game when Liverpool concede goals they tend to be from set pieces or on breakaways and they do concede goals like that obviously but the manner in which that they play after 80, 85 minutes, teams firstly are tired and the concentration starts to go. Liverpool have kind of, they're, they're like a, a lightweight boxer that's been going through the rounds waiting for their moment to strike late on. And they, they target those last 15 minutes as an opportunity to strike while the iron is hot, while teams are on the back foot, really kick teams while they're down. And they've been doing it this season. They've scored 10 goals in their last 10 games in the last 15 minutes and it's not by accident it's not that they're lucky it's not that they're getting decisions it's that they're playing really 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 what was that what was the fantastic word i used a minute ago um abrasive football yeah they, they grind teams down right away to the last few minutes of the game and as much as it's not pretty and as much as they're relying on taking those chances late on it's working for them. But in terms of football that we're watching and teams going out consistently winning every single week, I think that Leicester have been much more impressive than Manchester City this year. And so fair play to Brendan Rodgers there. And I would not rule out Leicester winning the league this year. I, I just wouldn't. I, I just, stranger things have happened. Um, Norwich beat Everton 2-0. And I mean, this really has to be the nail in the coffin for Marco Silva. Again, Joe spoke a bit about him the other day. Uh, Wagner's doing a fantastic job at Norwich. I, even just keeping them within touching distance of, of the others in the Premier League is an achievement based on the size of the club and the budget. 
Um, but it's great to see them getting another win under their belt. Seriously worrying times at Everton, though. Um, West Ham, nil. Burnley, three. Not West Ham's, apologies, sorry. Watford, three. Burn, uh, <laughs> Watford, nil. Burnley, three. Sean Deutsch has been linked with the Everton job. I don't know really why he'd be moving considering he had Burnley playing Europa League football last year. He's also been linked with the Arsenal job, funnily enough, and the West Ham job. I think it's most likely that he would take the West Ham job if he was going to take any of them. I heard an interview with him on the BBC maybe about two weeks ago. I think his family live in London. He's desperate to stay in London. He's not desperate to stay, but he's just, there is a commute that he regularly does um, to Yorkshire and back getting up 6 a.m., staying a couple of nights over week, over staying a couple of nights every week, and it, it is taking a toll on his family life, and it is something that I've heard him speaking a little bit about this year, um, but he's doing an absolutely fantastic job at Burnley again, just like Nuno is at Wolves, and like, <laughs> like the man in charge at Sheffield United, who we're going to talk about now. Um, Sheffield United 3, Manchester United 3 in what was one of the most enjoyable games of football that I've watched in a long time purely just because I don't like Manchester United. I mean, I watched the first hour or so of that game and I took the dog for a walk um, at 2-1. United had just got one back and I couldn't believe seeing that United had, had somehow managed to score three goals. I don't think I've ever seen a Man U team play as poorly as they did in that game. Honestly, Fred and Pereira are absolutely awful in midfield. And the fact that it was Lingard that came on and made a difference, I mean, it just shows the quality that is lacking in this United team. I don't re like, they, they won again 2-1 tonight in Europe. They can continue doing that for as long as they want, as, as far as all fans of other clubs are concerned. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to finish mid-table this season and good luck to them. If they want to play like that, if they... I'm not gonna. Ugh, I'm not gonna waste my time talking about them. Sheffield United, however, were absolutely fantastic for all parts of that game that I watched. Their pressing game was absolutely outrageous. I don't think anybody presses like that in the Premier League. And obviously, look, it, it did come back to bite them. They obviously were tired going into the last twenty minutes of that game. But the way that they played, the way they passed the ball, the way they they chased people and handed it down. I mean, uh, what a what a fantastic team to watch. What a fantastic team to support. It must be absolutely brilliant being a Blades fan this season. I, I, I can't imagine a happier set of fans than theirs this year. Um, we skipped one of the Saturday games. Obviously, City beat Chelsea 2-1 in a game that Chelsea went to goal up in and actually dominated possession. I think that was the lowest possession that Pep has had since he's, he's come to Manchester City. Again, credit to how well Frank is doing at, at Chelsea, but... City don't look like the same team they were last year. And I'm going to say it now. I I know I said that I wouldn't back Liverpool to finish. Well, not that I wouldn't back them to finish first, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Leicester win the league. I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see Leicester finish ahead of City. And I think that if any team is going to drop out of the top four between the teams that are there now, I think it actually could be City. I think that they could fall off, tail off. Aguero is injured now to, to go along with Laporte and Sané. Um, and it just... I don't know. I just think that this could be the season that the wheels come off. I don't think that Pep will be there next year, so watch that space. But again, Chelsea doing fantastically. I know they scraped a result in Europe 2-2, but they're so fun to watch. Man, Chelsea are so fun to watch, and I hate to say it because I've never been a big Chelsea fan, but they are really, really fun to watch. I'm so sick of Man City. I wish that had gone the other way around. But, yeah, look, credit to City. They When the chips were down, they came up with a result. A Liverpool-esque um, Villa beat Newcastle in the final game uh, 2-0 a really really poor Newcastle team again I, I would have been surprised if Newcastle had gone and, and beat and won anywhere that night Newcastle on the road are not the biggest challenge a couple of set piece goals Conor Horan involved in both a goal and an assist the man puts in a great delivery I think Villa will continue to pick up points at home, especially against teams in the bottom half of the table. I tipped them to go down early on. I think they'll be all right. They've got enough quality in there. Uh, very quickly, we'll have a look at a couple of the midweek games. Uh, we touched on Chelsea, obviously, getting the job done 2-2 in, in what was a crazy, crazy game of football. Um, I think the biggest talking point would probably be last night, Liverpool, Napoli, um, a game that a lot of Liverpool fans kind of came out on social media during and afterwards, criticising Klopp's team selection. 
you know, saying that there was no Trent Alexander-Arnold and because he wasn't playing, we need to have more creative midfield and, you know, the front three haven't been rotated enough. I mean, this is the same manager that's got Liverpool to three consecutive European Cup finals. He's the same manager that has Liverpool nine points clear of the best, of the greatest ever Premier League team, eight points clear of Leicester after nine games. After 13 games, they've only dropped two points. The man knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, Napoli have continued to be a thorn in Liverpool's side over the last couple of seasons. I think all Liverpool fans knew what they were what they were going to get last night. Maybe if you were surprised to see him rest, Trent. But you got to remember that these managers work with the players every single day. And it might have been Trent that came to him and said, Yo, boss, I need a rest. You know, I've been working too hard. I've played every single game this season. I think there's only one that himself... And Mane have missed and Firmino, they've all missed one. There's some players that have played every single game this season. Robertson's played in every single game. Um, Salah's played in every single game. Van Dijk has played in every single game. Sorry, Salah hasn't played in every game, he's missed one. But there are so many players. Van Dijk has played every minute of every game this season for Liverpool. These guys got to be rested. And I think Klopp thought he could get away with doing one or two last night. It obviously didn't work out for him, but I'd back Liverpool to go and win in Salzburg. Um, there's some very, very, very entertaining Premier League action coming up this week, this weekend. Myself and Joe will preview it all here tomorrow in the studio. Hopefully I have that pod up with you before Saturday morning. Um, so make sure you tune in, check it out. Subscribe to us on YouTube, please, please, please. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks.